The rover's descent will test out a new navigation system. It's an autopilot designed to work out the best target location and steer towards it. It's supposed to make touchdowns safer and more precise. The rover is aiming for this riverbed in the Yazero crater. Perseverance will investigate its surroundings with cameras and measuring devices. Researchers hope the data will give them new insights into the geology and climatic history of Mars. But Perseverance has another job too, to search for signs of life. We probably won't find old DNA or anything like that on Mars. But we might find rocks that were formed by biological processes. That's what we're expecting, or at least we're hoping. MastCam Z has been specially developed to search for these traces of life. It has two cameras which can deliver detailed colour photographs in 3D. The camera system also has an advanced zoom to help researchers see tiny patterns and structures in the rock. Our team leader is a professor in Arizona and he always puts it like this. Imagine you're sitting in the stands of a football stadium at the goal end. You can see a fly buzzing around between the goal posts at the other end. <laughs> the mission is also sending a small helicopter to Mars. Its job is to carry out autonomous test flights, where it controls the whole process by itself. Its propellers have to spin eight times as fast as on Earth because the atmosphere of Mars is so thin. Since the first flight attempts, it's taken engineers five years to get to this point. The mission's most important goal is to collect rock samples, examine them and pack them ready for transport. To do this, Perseverance is fitted with the most complex robotic system NASA has ever developed. Perseverance will deposit the samples on the surface of Mars. In 10 years, another rover will collect them and bring them to a launch pad. A rocket will then carry them to a satellite in orbit, which will finally bring the precious cargo to Earth. So excitement is growing at, at Mission Control. Let's bring in Mitch Schulte. He is a program scientist with the Mars 2020 Exploration Program at NASA headquarters in Washington and joins us now from there. Mitch, there have been rovers on Mars before. What is the big difference of this one? The very big difference is that we finally designed instruments to really look in detail at the rock record to see on the level of microorganisms, which is what we think life might, uh, the kind of life that might have existed on Mars. Uh, so we'll be finally be able to see things in the detail that we need really to tease apart whether this landing site and these rocks were was habitable and whether uh, it left behind evidence that life might have been there. If you indeed find microbial life on Mars, what kind of impact will that have? Why should I care? Well, so it, we, we really don't understand how life started on Earth. And so just finding another example of life somewhere beyond Earth will be a really big deal because it will tell us that there's something fundamental about life that it sort of wants to start. To be clear, we're looking for evidence in the ancient rock record on Mars that life might have left behind deposits. We're not looking for uh, current life on Mars, but we do see that Mars and Earth are similar geologically. And so this would mean, if we find evidence for life on Mars, this would mean that there are a set of conditions that could be sort of universal that that allow life and in fact sort of make life form. But if we're uh, looking at, um, into the future, there seems to be a race to Mars right now. Why is it so important for us uh, to learn something about a planet that you and I would have so much trouble to live on? Well, so uh, w one of the things that makes it hard to live on is that it has a very thin atmosphere, so it's not able to trap heat from the sun to keep it warm. Uh, one of the things that we know about life on Earth is that wherever there's liquid water within certain limits of temperature, for example, we find things alive in that water here on Earth. And so we can take lessons from studying Mars that help us understand what conditions are necessary for life and what can happen to a planet when conditions and environmental uh, factors change. 
So one of the questions that is on everybody's mind, of course, all the time, when do you think that the first human mission to Mars will be on its way? We're working on sending people back to uh, the moon first, sort of as a base for getting to Mars eventually. Uh, and we're planning to do that by the middle of uh, the coming decade. And so after that, we'll probably, uh, you know, it'll take a little while for us to, to scale things up to being able to get out to Mars. So it'll probably be a few, a couple decades uh, further down the road. Well, looking forward to that one. Thank you very much, Mitch Schulte, a program scientist at NASA. Thank you.